not far outside of San Diego. Jason Litzow going to be taking on Emmanuel Lucero in our main event. First, a 10-round lightweight bout between Tyrone Harris and Rafael Ortiz. There is the Mexican-born 29-year-old Rafael Ortiz. He grew up and still fights out of Oregon. He's 14, 10, and 2. 13 of his 14 wins coming by way of knockout. We have seen Tyrone Harris before. He won the first 14 fights of his career. He is 6 and 3 since. He's from Lansing, Michigan, and he's 26 years old. Good crowd gathering here early evening in Valley Center, California. Tyrone Harris, 2000 National Golden Gloves champ. Won two straights since a majority decision loss to former lightweight champion Stevie Johnston in January. Tony Krebs is the referee, and they are scheduled for 10 rounds. I want you guys to obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves and go back and wait for the bell. The ring experience, they've had a similar amount of pro experience. Harris, of course, talk about the better competition being against Stevie Johnston in January was a good fight for him. We also saw him against Kobago Galadzi, Olympian, then okay, a French contender. Rafael. Tyrone Harris in the red trunks, Ortiz in the blue with silver trim. Stop. Harris is a southpaw, the man in the red, as you just described. And his switch to the other side of the plate every once in a while, go orthodox when he feels that he needs to. Ortiz has lost four of his last eight with a draw in there. You know, you touched upon Ortiz, 14 wins, Joe, and 13 knockouts. Ortiz has not been able to win beyond the C-plus level. And all his knockouts have been at that C-plus level. He has not been able to score a knockout at a higher level. First round knockout, you see Harris has eight. Ortiz does not have one. As you said, Harris has fought the better competition, and he's lost there. But for the most part, he's been competitive. Good job by Harris. He doubled up that left hand and staggered Ortiz against the ropes, and now he's headhunting and scoring well here just a minute in to round number one. No surprise that Harris is going to grab the early start and be ahead. Oh, and a Hand puts down Ortiz. And the power hand for Four, a southpaw, that backhand five, that he could six, turn his leg into, seven, shift his weight into. Eight. Come here, talk to me. You okay? A lot of time right. left, half of the round. See if Harris can go to work here on Ortiz. Works in behind that jab. Patiently stalking his prey here. Scored the knockdown moments ago with that left hand. Doubled up the left hand early on to get things started. As we said before, Harris has been competitive, even though he's lost with the better competition. He's been competitive with competition that Ortiz has not shown so far that he can be competitive with, and not showing it so far early on here. There's a cut on the inside corner of the left eye of Ortiz. Again, don't get panicky if you're back of Ortiz. I'll tell you why. It ex you'd have to expect Harris to jump out early. He's the faster guy. He's the more physically talented guy. Those kind of guys always get leads early on. The ability of Ortiz is to try to go late into deep waters, try to last, survive, and then hopefully start to break down Harris physically and mentally. So these are new, not new waters for Ortiz. He's been behind in fights many times. Big start for the 26-year-old from Michigan. Tyrone Harris scores the knockdown in the opening stanza. If you're Harris, you're a southpaw, you're taller, you want to be on the outside, you want to set up that power punch, the backhand, that straight left hand that split the guard of Ortiz and put him on the floor. Good start to Friday Night Fights, our opening round here as Harris scores the knockdown against Rafael Ortiz in a round 
which he just dominated. He had 30 connects out of 57 punches thrown. Ortiz was only able to land four connects, according to our punch stat stats. You know, it's more easy work with the jab. Touched on it the last round, Joe, after dominating round by Harris. Ortiz cannot match ability and speed early, but his counter to that is pressure and steadiness. That takes time, it takes rounds to work. So you know that early on are going to be giveaway rounds by Ortiz. He's looking to be good down the stretch, like a late closer in a horse race. Tries to barrel in that time. Harris was able to turn him away with that right hand. Harris back out at range. Not a lot of advantages, except maybe the ability to be durable for Ortiz, but one advantage, bigger man, between lightweight and junior welterweight his entire career. Harris, smaller man, between junior lightweight and lightweight most fights. Straight left hand comes in from Harris, and now there's a cut around the outside of the right eye of Rafael Ortiz. Remember, two things that Ortiz hopes will be working for him against Harris. One is pressure and the ability to maybe wear Harris down after that speed starts to show itself or finishes showing itself early. The other thing Ortiz hopes for is the weather. It's very hot here. He hopes with pressure and with a little bit of help with the elements, maybe, just maybe, he can start to wear down Harris. See that speed of Tyrone Harris. Comes in, the left hand scores again. It split that guard of Ortiz. Harris working that left hand behind that southpaw right jab. Ortiz gives the look of a very durable guy. He has taken a lot here in the early goings. Well, right now, so far, early on, what you got to like about Harris, besides being well ahead and showing he has a big advantage with speed, he understands geography. He understands where he can best use those quicker hands and those long arms on the outside. Ortiz, Harris, end of two. Good look at Wally Jorgensen working on that cut on the outside of the right eye of Rafael Ortiz. Referee Tony Krebs said that that cut was actually caused by a clash of heads in the second round. He also has pretty good nick around the left eye that came from a punch in the first round. Tyrone Harris scored the knockdown in that opening round. Round number three now scheduled for 10. Ortiz coming out with a little more urgency. You can see the headshots landed by rounds. Harris off to a very strong start. Ortiz would serve himself well. One to use the jab, even though he's not going to outspeed Harris with the jab, but he could neutralize Harris a little bit, stabilize him a little bit on the outside by at least getting something coming at Harris to make him think and slow down with the shots that he's pot-shotting Ortiz with. The other thing, Ortiz would serve himself very well, Joe, if we would aim those punches downstairs at Harris, as he does right there. Take those legs away a little bit, maybe take some of the speed away from Harris. We know that Ortiz is predictable, he's one-dimensional. He's slow. He's in there with a guy a lot faster than him. But one thing we also know, Ortiz came in here in great shape. 133 and a half pounds, lightest weight of Ortiz's career. Able to land a straight right hand moments ago. And doing a better job of coming forward with some aggression here against Harris here in this third round. Harris catches it on the way in that time. Puts together three punches. You see some of the dimension of Harris. He can stand on the outside. He can just get off first behind that southpaw jab, beat you to the mark. He can also counter a little bit, make you miss, chuck something back at you, step back, walk you into a trap. And he can use that ring, as you see. 
Ortiz, sorry to say, but his backers can only do one thing. Come forward and hope to break down Mr. Harris. Just came forward there with a burst of aggression with a straight right hand and tried to place a left hook. There's a lead right hand from Ortiz. Blood splattering everywhere ringside when he comes forward. He's dealing with two cuts, the one around the right eye, the worst of them. Bad start, but maybe good finish for Ortiz. Coming to the end of three on Friday Night Fights. Here is Rincon, Casino Resort, here in Southern California. Round number four between Rafael Ortiz in the blue and Tyrone Harris in the red. Joe Tessator and Teddy Atlas with you ringside. We're going to visit with the hot lightweight Michael Casitas in a little bit. And then in our main event, we'll see Emmanuel Lucero against Jason Litzow with Bill Walton as our special guest analyst. Plus, Vernon Forrest is the studio analyst, and he's ready to join us right now. Vernon, did I hear you say at the beginning of the broadcast, hey, Joe, I'm a world champion, not a title holder? Did my ears hear that? Exactly. You're right. It is. I did say that. I am a title. I let am me, a champion. Let me tell you something, time. my man. Talk to me. <laughs> Talk to me. Talk to you me, are Joe. A world champion. You are a world champion. I don't know that there's a junior middleweight who's the world champion, but just be thankful that you're not getting a big dose of one Brian Kenny tonight. You know that that's his favorite <laughs> subject matter. And I love Robert Flores. But you are no part of Brian Kenny on that conversation. All right, let's talk about Tyrone Harris, this uh, young man from Michigan. Vernon, what do you see out of him? He scored early on with the knockdown. What do you like? What does he need to improve on? Hey, I think he's doing everything right. He's, uh, he's fighting a perfect fight. The only thing I think he should do is pick it up a little bit and then start the fight. The guy's cut on both eyes. Um, he, he's hitting the guy anytime he feel like hitting the guy. So just pick it up, throw a few more combinations, the fight will be stopped. Hey, Vernon, you know that with a guy like Ortiz, it was never going to be a problem for Harris, the more polished guy, the more finesseful guy, the more talented guy, to get out to a lead. It was always going to be about dealing with Ortiz, a tough son of a gun, coming down the stretch as the rounds go on. Well, well see, with a guy like that, you got to break him down early. Um, early on, Tom, uh, Harris was hitting him really good in the body. And he, he was catching with some really good straight shots. And, um, and and he stopped him in his tracks. And, and um, Ortiz was a little hesitant to come forward. Now, um, you know, he's throwing the caution out of the wind, and he's really putting pressure on Harris. But the only thing really Harris had to do is go back to what he did in the beginning with, when he hurt him was um, set down on your punches a little bit more. Uh, he's going to run into a punch. He's running to everything. He don't have to. He don't. He don't has. A, he doesn't have to do anything fancy. Just let him run into his punches. But I think he should throw a little bit more punches. Uh, the referee's going to start the fight because he cut. He's cut on both eyes real bad. In other words, Vernon, what you want to see a little bit of is Harris letting Ortiz help him a little bit. Let him walk into his shots. Let him do some of his work for him. Absolutely. We will be hearing from Vernon Forrest all night long. Great to have you with us as our special studio guest analyst. Vernon Forrest coming to the end of round four, Ortiz and Harris. The sun has gone down here at Harris Rincon in Southern California as we are now starting round number five of our co-feature entertaining opening bout. Rafael Ortiz hit the deck in the first round. Tyrone Harris scored the knockdown. He's also two cuts that he's been dealing with, but steady, durable, keeps coming forward, staying in there. Teddy set forth the game plan, and it looks like that's how it's playing out. There's all kinds of different elements of talent. Some show themselves early, some show themselves late. The element of talent that Ortiz has shows itself late. Just got caught by a short left hand as he stepped forward there. There's another left hand from Harris. Southpaw now goes to the right uppercut to lead off that two-punch combination. And now he's really scoring easily here, one minute in to round number five. 
punch track number, the total punches. You see Harris with a 102 to 33 edge. Some people weigh talent strictly as physical talent. Quick hands, quick feet, good instincts. Harris has all those. Again, I said it in the first round, the talent of Ortiz is to endure, to be steady, to be consistent, and to try to break you down. To make you forget that you're faster. And to make you forget that you're a guy who can move around the ring and make you stop moving just with that consistency. Again, you see all the dimensions and talent of Harris. On the outside, he can get off first, beat you to the mark, he can move to the side. And that works well against a guy like Ortiz, who's cement footed. Ortiz needs to be set to punch. In other words, you better be right in front of him for him to get off. He doesn't adjust to lateral movement well, as you saw right there. Just look at the legs of Ortiz. Very slow, very plodding. He's okay if you're in front of him. But as soon as you move around him, he has a lot of trouble adjusting to those angles. A lot of choices tonight for Harris. And he's acted upon a lot of them with very good results. Only There's a straight left hand again. The only choice for Ortiz is to find a way to get in, and he's having trouble. As we come to the end of this fifth round, we're going to send it to Robert Forrest for a Sports Center 30 at 30. Hey. Look at me in my eye. Look at my eye. Keep doing what you're Tyrone doing. Harris getting some instructions there. We are at Harris Rincon. And I don't know if you saw it, but if you did, you know how good this effort was. The WBO lightweight title was earned by Michael Katsidis, the 23-0 Australian-based all-action fighter against Cesar Amundsen. Cut badly around the eyes, bruised and beaten, but non-stop action and has emerged as one of the true, real exciting fighters that has people thrilled for the future of Michael Katsidis. Congratulations and Thank welcome you. to Friday Night Fights. It's a pleasure being here. What kind of reaction have you gotten after that effort? Uh, it, everyone seems to be very excited. Like, I just saw the view then and the footage of the fight, and it just sends shivers up my spine now, and that's how it is Take every it single time I fight, and the people are seeing to enjoy go, go. it, and the response has been great. Ring Magazine's number five lightweight in the world now, Teddy. Very exciting young man. Yeah, it's good to have you with us. Do you worry about defense a little bit as far as having a long career? Quite honestly, you're a guy who's appealing to the fans because you give everything in that squared circle. But something is taken out every time you go in there and take that many punches. Do you concern yourself with having a long career instead of just an exciting career? Uh, that, that's a very good point there, Ted. But, um, but with that fight there, like my vision was impaired and, uh, and the defense, I thought I did pretty well considering the vision was, was not so much as what it could have been. Um, but look, with a lot of my fights in the future, you'll see that like my defense is picking up and there's a lot more to, to what it seems than just an aggressive all-out fighter. Undefeated Michael Casitas here ringside with us. Round number six, Rafael Ortiz has taken a lot of punishment in the first half of this scheduled 10-rounder, but he keeps coming forward as Teddy said he would. That is his talent, that is his skill set. Harris has the speed and the skill and the effectiveness and Ortiz, sturdy and durable. Michael, Ortiz, not the most talented guy in the world, but you have to love his temperament. A guy who just figures, hey, I might lose early, but I'm going to find a way to get into you. Well, exactly. He's a war horse, and he's, he's, he's all out or nothing sort of style. You know, like, he's got everything to gain and nothing to lose by this fight, so I can see the way he's pushing forward a bit. He's against a very tough opponent, Tyrone Harris. You know, he has got all the options there, and he's moving around very well. Just probably not going out for the kill as much as he could have at times. I see him letting off the hook a little bit, but um, Ortiz... I think that just coming through forward, the more pressure, the hungrier guys in forward, the more success he's having. You know, you've been in these situations before. You have ability, you're always working on it to get better. But this is the kind of fight where Harris, we know he's the faster guy, the more talented guy, the more polished guy. But chances are he's going to be tested in another area before this night's over. 
When do you know as a fighter that you have what it takes to be able to serve up to that test? Do you know it in the amateurs? Do you have to have that pro fight, that defining fight, that fight where you take a deep breath mentally and physically to know that I can handle those kind of places? I, I believe it's something that's born within you. You know, it's not the size of the dog and the fight, it's the size of the fight and the dog. And, and you know, if you've got a guy hurt and you can jump on for the kill and you can dig deep, and I think you know it right from day one when you start boxing that it's there. You know, some people need to be tested to find it within themselves and, and others, each, each has their own. Michael Casitas, lightweight titles. Before we say goodbye to you, give me a sense of your uh, upcoming schedule in the immediate future. Oh, look, at the, at the moment, it's very, very busy. You know, I have to honor my commitments as champion, and, um, you know, I've got Mantry to fight Juan Diaz, and um, I'm looking at nothing else other than Juan Diaz, so we've got big fights coming ahead from here on in. Michael Casitas, congratulations. Look forward to seeing you down the road. Michael Casitas. Friday Night Fights, presented by Just For Men Hair Color, working our way towards Emmanuel Osiro against the always entertaining Jason Litzow, an entertaining co-feature to open things up here in Southern California, Rafael Ortiz and Tyrone Harris. Tyrone Harris in the red trunks, 20 wins, three losses in his career. He's from Lansing, Michigan. He was on our ESPN Boxing Series before against Koba Dogalazi. One thing that's serving Harris right now that you don't see as far as a tangible thing, but believe me, it's there. Harris dealing with the pressure of Ortiz pretty well because of his amateur background. 150 amateur fights. That confidence, that relaxation, that comfort level that comes with those many fights will serve you in the pros, and it's serving Harris right now. Forget about his speed and his quick hands, but it's serving him to know that he can handle plenty of Ortiz. It's keeping him confident. Opened up for a moment with that right hand. Ortiz just didn't have enough with his right. Harris comfortable and controlled on the outside. Lots of opportunities for Harris, not only to just beat Ortiz to the punch like that, not only to make a miss and counter like that, and to step around them like he does right there, but also opportunities to punch in between the shots of Ortiz when he's fat. Ortiz is one of those guys that at certain points of fights, you can see it going to those too tough for his own good comments as the blood continues to pour down the right side of his face and he continues to come forward. And in this round, Harris has been peppering him with headshots. You see the punch track numbers, 150 headshots landed for Harris, just 30 landed for Ortiz. Well, the man who's been in charge of stemming that blood flow in the corner of Ortiz has been Wally Jorgensen. Ortiz keeps pressing forward. Mouthpiece has come out here. And he eats another left hand from the southpaw and snaps his head back again. That's easily the fourth or fifth time that Ortiz's head has been snapped back in this round alone. And he keeps pressing the action. The only chance Ortiz has of delivering his own blows and the mouthpiece will be washed off and put back in now. Well, there was a low in the action as the referee takes care of that. But Give me some water, coach. The only shot, I believe, for Ortiz to catch Harris with any leather is when Harris stands in front. When Harris uses those legs to the side, Ortiz cannot get off. We will have three rounds to go. Rafael and Ortiz and Tyrone Harris from Harris. We've seen him many times, and it's always interesting and entertaining. Jason Litzow in our main event against Emmanuel Lucero. We are here at Harris, and our special guest analyst joining Teddy and me for that fight will be none other than Hall of Famer Bill Walton. 
Welcome, Bill. How you enjoying Friday Night Fight so far? Joe, I'm having the time of my life here. Teddy, wonderful to be with you once again. Good to be have you. In my hometown, out here at Harris Rincon. What an event. What a spectacular summer evening. Going to have a good one coming up with you, Bill Walton. Jason Litzow, Manuel Lucero. That is still to come. I'll enjoy what conversations Bill and Teddy can get into. Now, a couple weeks ago, we had Bill Parcells. Now, this week, Bill Walton. So that is still to come. As for now, round number eight, Ortiz and Harris. <laughs> fight but he is starting to lose his trunks he is indeed backside coming down a bit just at the moment when ortiz went to the body three times too nonetheless and he goes to the body two more times see that protector around the waist of harris almost fully exposed at this point there's a left hand placed to the body by ortiz that may be some of the strategy that can be used by Ortiz. Those trunks get any lower. Harris maybe can be tripped up on him a little bit. Give Ortiz a chance to jump in. Body shots this round. It's exactly what Ortiz has been doing. Targeting 12 connects out of 18 thrown. If Ortiz targets one place, it should be downstairs. We said it early. The problem is if you wait too late, it becomes too late. We've said it many times. Going to the body is like having CDs in a bank. You get interest on them. But you want to put that interest in early. Early on in this fight, it's all Harris. Ortiz went down in round number one. He's been dealing with two cuts since the early goings. Very much committed to getting to the inside and working that body here in round number eight. Actually, one of his stronger efforts that we've seen so far tonight. Again, you go to the body with a quicker guy, you start to take some of that quickness away, some of that mobility away. Also, when a guy's taller and longer like Harris is, usually he has a thin, wiry body. Why not attack it? <laughs> Ortiz charges in this time. Four punch combination, last of which did split the guard by Harris. Not much on it. Well, he's a tough guy. Rafael Ortiz hanging around and still committed to the cause. Two rounds to go here. Take a little look at what's happened tonight so far. Round one, good fast start by the quicker Harris. Downstairs, upstairs, and the power hand, the left hand for a southpaw puts Ortiz down on the floor. Round four, Ortiz always shows that metal. He comes back a little bit, the old fashioned way. Coming forward, pressure, pressure, pressure. Round seven, Earl Harris is showing that he can handle a little bit of pressure. He's more than just flash and quick hands, as once again, he keeps control. You see Ortiz's work in the last round, his most productive round of the evening. 15 body shots landed. In fact, every punch he landed in that eighth round was a body shot. Round number nine now. Tyrone Harris has been in control. Ortiz has been tough. Teddy Atlas's scorecard opens up 10-8 with the knockdown and now stands 78-73 with Ortiz earning that last round. Both men have been knocked out one time. Both men have been 10 rounds two times. This is right around the area where Ortiz would hope that the pressure all night long would start to show itself, would maybe shot start to show a little bit of a crack in the armor of Harris. Maybe get Harris to stand in front of him a little more and start to succumb to him a little bit. 
It's late in the game, and Ortiz is used to being late in the game. He needs that pressure to show itself right now. Harris now moving to his right, sending out that southpaw right jab. Three punch combination. Gets away from the sweeping right hand of Ortiz. Right! That's back. One thing you haven't seen from Harris, and you've seen just about everything from Harris, a little inside fighting, a little clinching, when he figures it makes sense to clinch on the inside with a guy whose only chance is to win on the inside. That's smart boxing by Harris. He knows he has the edge on the outside. Ortiz can't match him there. Why give Ortiz any play inside? But you've seen a little bit of everything from Harris. The only thing you haven't seen is him switch from the southpaw stance to the orthodox stance. Hasn't had to. Now goes with the left hand right uppercut combination. Those three punches on the gloves of Ortiz. The heart and the metal of Ortiz has been steady all night. What has not been there, what has not been steady, and has hurt him, when he has pressed all night, he has not pressed behind the jab. And therefore, he's been picked off on the way in, like that, all night. One go. Hi, I'm Keith Hernandez. And former world title challenger, Emmanuel Lucero, mentally preparing himself for the main event, which will soon be coming your way as Lucero takes on Jason Litzow, a young man who's one of the most talked about prospects in the sport in recent years. And we're gonna have a special guest analyst who was the ultimate top prospect in his sport, former number one overall draft pick in the NBA, Bill Walton will be joining us for that main event. This is the 10th and final round between Ortiz and Tyrone Harris. Harris up 88-82 on Teddy's scorecard. Average punches landed through nine rounds. Well, I'll humbly say that I think it's pretty easy to be humble here. If Ortiz is to win this fight, he's going to do it by knockout. And dramatic knockout that would be here in the last round. And if he's going to do that, it's going to be one of two ways. He's going to have to catch Harris with a big shot as he steps out. Every once in a while, Harris will step away on a straight line. It's going to be up to Ortiz to step with him and nail him on the way out. Either that or a good, well-placed body shot, Joe. Harris, combination punching. It's been there all night. Big speed differential between these two. Right. Can always hit that magic button with the body shot. Saw with Jerry Penalosa. Well, the magic body shot right now that Ortiz needs desperately would be a left hook to the liver. A Mickey Ward special. A man that we've had on our air many times and who has amazed and entertained audiences for many, many years. Ortiz still coming forward. Shown so much heart throughout this evening. There are a lot of us ringside who probably wouldn't have thought that he would have seen this 10th round after the way this thing started. But look at him still going after it, acting like a fighter, a committed pro, Rafael Ortiz. Ortiz might get a C for technique, but he gets an A plus factor. Shooting off uppercuts now is Tyrone Harris. Good straight lead left hand from Harris. He has starred tonight. One thing that Harris has control of, has had control of all night long besides the speed advantage. Anytime he wants to stop this pressure, all he has to do is move to the side. When he moves to the side, again, Ortiz has trouble adjusting those feet. And they 
Look to finish up strong with Harris landing the final headshot. Hey, strong effort from both men. 26-year-old Tyrone Harris, 29-year-old Rafael Ortiz. We'll come back and hear from the judges here at Friday Night Fights. Mountains, valleys, just outside of San Diego, California. Let's look at the Just For Men fight recap punch track and you can see Harris 233 headshots in dominating form over Rafael Ortiz. Teddy Atlas's scorecard went 10-8 early on with a knockdown but a very game effort from Ortiz 97-92. Harris was in control and the fight was not in much doubt throughout. Let's send it up to the ring now to Joe Martinez. Well, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, for two exciting rounds of boxing we go to the scorecards and we have a unanimous decision. Judges Jerry Cantu and Alejandro Rochin scored about the same, 99 to 90, while Judge David Dakin scores at 98 to 91. All three for your winner by unanimous decision, Tyrone Fist of Fury Harris. Tyrone Harris has now won three straight since that majority decision loss to Stevie Johnston, 21st win of his career.